Greetings to those interested in learning about confidence intervals. Picking up where we left off, we will answer the first question I posed the last time. To refresh your memory, here is that question. Answering this question will give you a more complete understanding about the interpretation of a confidence interval. Pause here to recall your initial thoughts about this question. To answer this question, we will simulate the process of finding many, many sample means and constructing many, many confidence intervals. We will go back to the example that used the weights of the bags of pretzels. We generated 100,000 values in Minitab to represent the population of weights. Here is the histogram of the 100,000 weights. We knew the distribution of weights was normal, the mean was 16 ounces, and the standard deviation was assumed to be 5 ounces. Remember, a confidence interval is used to estimate an unknown population mean. We use the mean of 16 and the standard deviation of 5 ounces in the pretzels example as an illustration. We are not using the heights of adult males in Virginia example here because we never made an assumption about what the population mean was. We were trying to estimate that value. In this example, we took 1,000 samples of size 5, found each sample's mean, and graphed the 1,000 means to display a sampling distribution. We also constructed the sampling distributions when n was 15 and 30. Here are those sampling distributions. Let's work with the samples of size 30. Here is that histogram. This histogram displays the 1,000 sample means of size 30. Now I will adjust the x-axis for us to zoom in on the sampling distribution. Pause here to calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. This quantity is 0.91, as we can see here. What if we constructed 1,095% confidence intervals using those 1,000 sample means we collected? How many of those confidence intervals would capture the true mean of 16 ounces? Pause here to think about this. To begin answering that question, let's refer to the first sample of 30 weights. Our sample mean from this sample is 14.55. Pause to construct a 95% confidence interval using the sample mean of 14.55. Did you get the 95% confidence interval for the first sample of 30 to be 12.76 to 16.34? Let's visualize this below the graph. Did you notice that our population mean weight of 16 is captured by this confidence interval? Now, in the same way, I will construct 100 confidence intervals based on the first 100 sample means from the 1,000 samples taken previously. Pause here to estimate the number of intervals you believe will capture 16. Now, I will display these 100 confidence intervals in a series of graphs where each graph displays 20 confidence intervals. The confidence intervals are represented by the blue vertical lines and the population mean of 16 is represented by the red horizontal line. Please note that I switched the x and y axes. The confidence interval captures the population mean when a blue line intersects the red line. As you view each graph, Pause the video to determine how many confidence intervals did not capture the population mean of 16. Pause again to compare this number with your estimate. Did you count that 3 of the 100 intervals did not capture 16? Those confidence intervals were from samples numbered 11, 67, and 98. Just so you know, sample 23 was close, but it did capture 16. Please rewind to view the graphs again if you did not see this. Did you expect that because we constructed 95% confidence intervals, that 95 of the 100 intervals would capture 16, and in turn 5 would not? If so, this estimate is appropriate. We expect 95 of the 100 intervals to capture 16, but we understand that that will not always happen. When you flip a coin 100 times, you expect 50 heads, right? Would you be terribly shocked if you ended up with 45 or 49 or 51 or 55 heads? The difference between what you expect and what you actually observe is called chance variability. We expect half the number of tosses to be heads 
and we expect 95% of the confidence intervals to capture the population mean, but we understand that when we actually observe 100 coin flips or 100 confidence intervals, there is a chance for variability. However, when you repeat a process many, many, many times, this mean of the actually observed outcomes approaches what you would actually expect. Do you remember this concept? Pause here to think about this. This property is called the law of large numbers. 100 confidence intervals, or even 1,000, are not that large in reality. To see this process over and over, you may use the following applet produced by Rossman and Chance. You can find the link to the website in the comments below this video. This applet will allow you to simulate the construction of many confidence intervals exactly like you just saw. We will set our mean to be 16, standard deviation to be 5, n to be 30, and we will create 20 intervals at a time. Watch what happens. Now I'm going to take 100 intervals at a time. As I simulate more and more intervals, we can see the running total percentage of intervals that captured mu getting closer to 95%. But this percentage will vary because of the law of large numbers. We can properly interpret this situation by saying that if we produced many, many 95% confidence intervals, we would expect 95% of those intervals to capture the population mean. After producing the rest of the 1,095% confidence intervals from the weights example, I discovered that 952 intervals captured the population mean of 16. I am not surprised by this result. In this video, we learned what will happen if we constructed many confidence intervals. Remember, in reality, we collect one sample, find one sample mean, and construct one confidence interval to gain understanding about the unknown population mean mu. We simulated taking many sample means because we wanted to get a better understanding of the confidence intervals interpretation. In the next video, we will find out what happens to the margin of error of a confidence interval as the confidence level and the sample size change. Thanks for watching.